So my objective here is to teach you Python in 10 minutes, or at least the important parts of it, assuming you already know a little bit about programming. So first, how do you get Python? I assume that you have some kind of Linux distribution that's based on Debian. You just do sudo apt-get install, just like anything else. How do you use Python? Um, well, there are several ways. One is the Python interpreter straight from the command line. And another is this IDE called Spider. There are tons of IDEs. This is just one that I, that I particularly like. Um, one thing that's nice about it is that uh, when you open up a function, whether it's a built-in function or one that you defined, a description of it comes up in this window, which can be incredibly useful. And you can run your scripts uh, just by pushing a button. So, uh, But what I'm going to actually do the tutorial in is this thing called the IPython Notebook. And you can ex install that from the command line the same way you install Python. And I've got a bunch of commands here that illustrate some important features of how it works. And I'm just going to go through and show you all of them. Um, so first, unlike C or C++ or something, Python lets you make a variable of any type. If you reassign it to a different type, it just doesn't care. So you can see A is just a variable there. Um, unlike C and C++, where an integer is, say, four bytes or something, you get arbitrary integer precision, which makes Python really great for cryptography. And uh, in addition, uh, with Sage, which is a mathematical module that extends regular Python, it's really the best way to explore some cryptographic algorithms, and so that's one reason I'm making this video for my cryptography class. And it seems like, uh, oh no, did it freeze? Okay, so here I go. Um, so if you divide 2 by 3, this is Python 2, which is what will probably be installed on your system by default. There's also Python 3. In Python 3, this would automatically be a float division. But in Python 2, if you divide 2 by 3, you get 0. And uh, then you get a syntax error if you just write something that's nonsense. So it has this operator called type, which can be useful to figure out what kinds of things p things are. And uh, because there's no type declaration of a variable when you define it, sometimes you want to know what it actually is. And so the, the type keyword lets you figure that out. And you can see it does have some kind of float type, int type, string type. And um, so you can do formatted strings just like in, in C or C++, if you already know how that works with, say, the printf function. It's basically exactly the same. So this is just an illustration with the string type. Um, and of course this could be percent %d, percent %f, etc. I assume you know how printf works. If you don't, that's what I'm talking about, is printf syntax. So the real star of the show is a list, and in a list you can mix types. So here's integers, floats, strings, all together. Um, you can use subscript notation on these things just like an array. So the first, it's a zero, uh, zero based array, so the first element is 3.0. There's a built-in length operator. Um, this tells you what is the index of the element uh, 3.0, so it's sort of a reverse lookup. You can use it like a stack and just pop off the top thing. Um, if you want to put it back onto the end, you can use append. Um, if you try to add two lists, the plus is overloaded and that gives you list concatenation, as you can see here. Um, there, there's a built-in sort operation and tons of other built-in list operations that I'm, I'm not going to go through. But if I were to hit period and then tab, you could see some of them. So there, that's also a good way to, to figure out how uh, functions work here. If you, if you open up the left print and then hit tab, it gives you uh, the, some of the documentation for the function. And so that's a, a good way to learn the language. The computer is being really slow. Uh, come on, stupid thing. All right, and um, so if lists are the star of the show, the killer app for list lists are list comprehensions. And because of list comprehensions, think code can sort of look fundamentally different in Python than it does in, in some other language because you don't have to write as many repeat loops. Um, so this is just set builder notation from math, if, if, you've ever, if you know what I'm talking about. So I want nums to be the elements L in L if their type is integer. And so that just selects out all the integer types. L for L and L if type is a string gives you all the strings. And think about the possibilities here. 
uh, this if statement, you can put any Boolean condition you want here. Uh, you can also transform lists like this. Like instead of just regular L, maybe you want two times L for every element in, in the list. So you've transformed every element in the list, and um, so the integers have been doubled. If you double a character, what it does is it repeats it twice, and that's why these things are now A, A, B, B, C, C. Um, but you do have to use repeat loops, and sort of the connection between repeat loops and um, and lists is the range operator. So if you if you say range ten, that just gives you all of the integers between zero and ten minus one. You can if you don't want to increment by one, you can increment by two by giving this third argument. And uh, if you don't want to start at zero, you don't have to start at zero. So that would be five seven nine. Uh, something similar is X range. I don't know why I'm talking about this. So instead of being a list, this is an iterator. So it, it doesn't it doesn't build itself until it needs to. Um, so it's a little bit faster in a repeat loop if you do this because it's not pre-building this list. It's just getting elements as they're needed. But you can see that the output is exactly the same whether you use range or X range. Um, so here's uh, playing around a little bit more with list comprehensions. Um, so I, now I'm, I'm dealing with two variables instead of just one, and I'm making a bunch of points that can be useful for mathematical type things. And uh, there's a lot of great stuff for built-in string processing. So here's here's a string. So you can use a string sort of sort of as if it were a list of letters, and use subscript notation. You can also do this thing called array slicing. And you can do that for any list, not just uh, not just string lists. Um, so what this does is it takes uh, all it takes the tenth element here that must be O, and it goes up to the nineteenth element that must be U. So it includes this one, excludes that one. If you don't give a second argument here, it just gives the entire suffix. And unlike C and C++, you can use negative indices. So negative 1 would be the very last thing, negative 2 is this, etc. So that can be convenient. Um, string parsing is easy because there are these built-in operations like split. Um, remember the, the sentence is, friends, Romans, countrymen, lend, lend me your ears. What it's doing by default here is every time it, it encounters a space character, it creates a different word element and then appends that to the output. If you want to split on some character besides space, you can do that. You just need to say what it is. So that's what I've done here in the second case. And uh, my computer's hanging a little bit. Come on. OK, so strip is another useful string thing. What it does is it takes out all the white space characters. And uh, if you combine the two, then you can you can split the list and then strip. And all you've got to do now is remove the punctuation, and you have a list of the words that occurred in the sentence, which can be useful for various reasons. Um, so there's also replace. So you can pre replace Romans with Romulans, and then it becomes friends, Romulans, countrymen, lend me your ears. Um, when you do repeat loops, they're usually of this form, you know, for something in some list. But if you want a handle on the index, you could, of course, make a counter variable, but that's a little bit of a pain. So enumerate lets you get them both at once. So in this variable, you get the index, and in this variable, you get the element. And so here I've printed them all together. And that's really convenient. This is how you write functions. You say def. And then you have to do this colon thing. You don't have to say what type the input is. And so here I have some kind of slightly dumb function. And all it does is, um, this is, by the way, how you do a type conversion. So s is a string here. You can see this makes it a list. And then I reverse the list and return it. So what that does is it prints out what backwards. Um, in general, the way you handle scope and blocks, code blocks, is by indentation instead of using brackets. So notice there are no brackets here. Python knows about the indentation and pays attention to it. So all this stuff, all these three lines are inside that conditional and it's just because of the indentations. It's kind of amazing. And I, I stole that code for bubble sort from uh, that website. So you can see some actual Python code. Um, another nice built-in operator is sum if you just want to add up the elements of a list. Uh, here is another fundamental Python type called a set, and 
So what's the difference between a set and a list? A set doesn't have repetitions. So it's sort of like the difference between, in math, a set and an ordered set. A list would be an order, ordered set, and a set would be a set. So if you, if you do a type conversion of the string to a set, what you get is all the distinct elements that occur. So there's no repetitions. And you can do set theoretic operations like intersection, union, symmetric difference, and other things like that. Um, the third like principal data type in Python is a dictionary. So this is just an associative array. It's like an array, except instead of using numbers to look things up, you can use anything. So in this case, I'm using strings, but it could be floats. Using floats is kind of a bad idea. But you can associate any type with any other type. And so what I've done here is I've associated months to fruits. If you print one of these things out, it looks like this. You can also define a, a dictionary using no, notation similar to this. Uh, generally, sets have uh, curly brackets instead of hard brackets, which are for lists. If you want to look something up, you can do it like this. If you want to see what the keys are, these are the this is like the domain of the function, and this is the range of the function. Um, this is a thing not about Python, but about Python notebook. If you use exclamation point before a command, what it does is it passes it to the operating system. So what I'm doing is I'm using just the Linux echo uh, utility. So what that does is it just prints a string to the screen, and then I'm redirecting the output into a file. And um, so that's just Linux stuff there. So what I've done is I've written um, I've written this string. Weird, I didn't realize I had those extra quotes there. Into the file Lord of the Rings text, and now this is how you do file I/O. It's extremely easy. You just say open the file that you want, and then you use this read lines command. And what it does is it gives you a list of strings, and each line is a string. So what can what can be more convenient than that? So it's really great for list process. I mean, uh, for file I/O and string processing. Of course, I didn't cover anything or, or everything, and uh, possibly anything either. These are some things that I would I would look into if you're interested in learning more. But of course, it, you could spend a lot of time learning about Python. The book is very thick.